To your right, two o'clock, all seven of yeah. them. Looking to the left. I got him. Go, 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 high, high, high. Come on, high. Keep coming, flutter, keep coming, come on, come on. Flutter, 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 right there. I've always wanted to fish with Dave Dinkert. Dave Dinkert is a guy that he's got a reputation. He has certainly won a lot of tournaments and I've always wondered what it would be like. Like what goes on in his boat? Wiggle it, wiggle it, 10 feet. Here he comes, here he comes, he hit it, he hit it. Nice he hit, job, man. Right that right was beautiful on. guiding there. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought you said you had to. I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, Relax. he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. All right, Dave, looks like a good day. Yeah. Not a cloud in the sky. A lot of sun. Water's going to be about the mid 60s over there, but we should have a good day. I'm glad we're doing this, man. I always wanted to fish yeah, with you. Yeah, it's been a while. Morning, gentlemen. Hey, Rich, good day. How you doing, man? It's been a while. Yeah, man. Yeah, this should be good today. Yeah. Yeah, the weather's looking good. We're gonna, we're gonna have low tide over there, so it'll start going down around 11 o'clock, and I think it's gonna turn over to our atmosphere, and it's gonna get calm and nice, the fish are gonna How are the, uh, the cold weather's not gonna bother them? It's just like 60 degrees in the morning, the water temperature, it'll get up to about 64, 65, those fish will get happy. Good. All right. It'll happen. Well, I brought plenty of stuff to bundle up for the ride over. Man, I'm excited to fish with you. I've been wanting to fish with you for years, yeah, man. Yeah, we fished against each other for all those years, now we're fishing with I each know. other, that's great. <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to it. Oh cool, man, fun, let's man. go. Okay. So that was an awesome experience getting to go fishing with Dave. It was, you know, I've, I've always wanted to fish with Dave Dinkert. Dave Dinkert is a guy that I've got a ton of respect for. You know, we fished next to him in all these tournaments. We fished around him. He's got a reputation. You know, we fished with some of the same customers and everybody who fishes with him loves him. And he has certainly beat us in a lot of tournaments and certainly won a lot of tournaments. And I've always wondered what it would be like, like what goes on in his boat? You, you, what kind of secrets would you learn? What kind of, you know, how does he do business? And that was that was the coolest part for me is just to, just to finally be in the boat with him. Well, it was cool as, you know, and when I ask around, about you know people that know Flamingo, Dave is you know top of the list. He he, he makes a living over there, uh, knows a lot of fishing everywhere. But boy, he is one of the best there ever is. Is fishing the Flamingo, and you know it was a little chilly that day, so you know we had a good ride over to Flamingo. We left from Hawks Cay here, kind of ran some of the banks, so we had an easy ride over. And when we got there, you know it was interesting to see. I was just wondering, you know, where is he going to go? You know, I've certainly spent a lot of days over there and know the area well, but he's still over there, you know, almost every every day. And he pulled up in a spot that that you know I'd certainly fished it before but not on that tide, not that way. Oh, so we're, we're gonna kind of just uh, work that. Yeah, I, I gotta see how here. clear it's gonna get and what's gonna happen here. Chartreuse on chartreuse. This is gonna look good on your jig, Dave. It's no use unless it's chartreuse. Dave, that's a good looking jig, man. You tied those yourself? Mm-hmm. I got that, got a little fly. You get, you get a white one out, a white worm for him? Oh, yeah. I blew those fish right there. The nice. muds, that mud, yeah. So snook and reds in here, you think? Yeah, it'll be snook, reds, trout. It'll be all sorts of stuff. They can't swim up on the flats right now. There's no water. And this is incoming. You know, I gotta say, it was kind of, it was kind of like I expected. Like he pulls up there real, real nice and easy, real professional like. He tells us exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna fish this edge. We're gonna cast over here. You should see them in these potholes. We should be able to get some bites. And man, that's exactly what happened. I mean, it was, it was like he had, been there 15 minutes before and knew exactly what was going on, and there was a lot of action, a lot of action right away. Little snooky. Little snook. Little snook. That size we call sneak, because they're so small. <laughs> sneak. All right, first fish on of the, the day. Board. See, see how dark he is on the on back? On the board. Yeah, he is dark on the back. Mm -hmm. On the board. A lot of mud's up on the edge of that channel. Yep. Okay, my first fish with Dave Dinkert. <laughs> I got one. I, uh -oh. usually, I usually just watch him, watch him catch fish. Big trout. I get to be nice the one trout. on the bow. Right on the color change right there, huh? Real nice trout, yeah. 
So he's, you know, telling us to throw in the potholes and what, you know, what that really means is, is just the little depressions. You know, it's hard to see, especially early in the morning. The light's not good, the water's a little chalky, but just those little differences. You know, there was a big flat up there. You could see the birds were up on it and stuff. The tide's kind of falling. But what, what, what there was there is, is he knew where all these little deep troughs were. And some of them weren't that big, you know, just, you know, four or five, six feet wide little holes. And these fish are just kind of laying and working through these little holes. Most of the time that morning, it seemed like they were just sitting in there. They weren't moving. They were just sitting there. And he had us using these jigs, which, you know, bucktail jigs, hard to beat, you know. But, uh, but just, just throwing those and just, just every time we'd see those holes out there, you know, just hit that one, hit that one, hit that one. And sure enough, man, bam, there'd be a redfish or a snook. Yeah. Looks like red. Red fish. Yeah. Right on. Nice. That's right on, man. So three fish, snook, <laughs> trout, red fish yeah. right off the bat. That's pretty good. And there would be a lot of fish in those holes, not just one or two, but I mean, we could keep hitting that hole and keep catching the fish. And I think that was where maybe that cloudy water uh, could help because they, they're not seeing exactly what's going on. They're just hearing it. It could be a fish feeding. It could be fish being caught, whatever. It's action. And we always say action brings more action. And uh, that seems to be exactly what was going on up there. Man, that's good fishing. <laughs> Thanks for giving me the, the right color jig. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, he inhaled it. Yeah. Man, they are stacked in here. There he is. Oh. All right, we all switched it back to white. So close to switching. <laughs> he chased it. He blew out right there, and then he we're, chased we're it in. three cranks away from switching. <laughs> real. Yeah. Got his Finally little, get one to bite. Got his little brother right here. Looks pretty similar. That's awesome, man. What do you guys got there? A pair of singles? A pair of singles. Take them any way we can get them. Yay! Right on. Yeah. To the left. Come on, come on. He's coming. Oh, got it. Oh, nice. Nice job. That was great. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, Towing Adventure, Mercury Marine, Go Boldly, St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth, Yeti, built for the wild, and by Ameritrail Trailers, Daiwa, Marathon, Power Pole, Reflex Boat Decking, and Vibe. Forget these, Tom, get way out there to our left. Go towards uh, Frank and Murray all through there. Just let her fly, get way out there. All these muds are from fish already spooked. I don't even want to catch these guys. We'll go back yes. towards through that <laughs> hole. Got to go Two way things. out there. I got the white tail and I threw it where Dave told me to. <laughs> I think the Dave telling you where to go is the number one. And I don't know if you noticed, but I also brought my Everglades buff today. I found it at the bottom of the suitcase. There you go. Figured it had to be good luck. So far it's working, huh? It's working good. I think it helps having you on the polling tower. Rich, make one cast all the way to your right at, at 2.30 or so, that elongated hole. Yeah. yeah, that one there. Well, that was fun. You know, Dave really thought like a fish. You know, he, he didn't just go looking, you know, like, hey, I'm going to go here and I think that, you know, we're going to see these fish. Like, he knew where they were living. He realized that, you know, even though the water's, you know, this much deeper, you know, than, than there, that the fish are going to be staging at a different time of day. We were asking about sight fishing. He, he realized early that morning sight fishing wasn't going to be great. It was a little cold. He knew this fish were gonna be staged in these holes, and we and we we scored. I mean, we went through that morning. Um, redfish, snook. I even caught a nice big trout. You know, hitting these potholes. Very interesting. I mean, occasionally we'd see a redfish. You know, scooting across the grass, but it really wasn't a good sight fishing opportunity at that point. But he kept saying, later in the day we'll get into sight fishing. Let's let's do this now. So we could have been out there on the flats looking 
sight fishing, wasting our time, which I've done many a day. But he knew that that's where we should have been, those deeper edges. He knew those fish were staying there, staging there, you know, waiting for it to warm up. But very productive, especially with those jigs, you know, lots of action. And you say these, these fish have just grown up? That's from... all it is. They, they picked up three or four inches from last year. That's a great size fish. Mm -hmm. Does all the things that the that they need to do. Well, we're almost having fun. <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed all the action, and it was cool to catch a bunch of fish. But I mean, we can do that, you know, ourselves. We can go out and catch a bunch of different fish. What I enjoyed the most about that day was just being on the boat with Dave, watching him operate, and seeing just how some guides operate just slightly different than others. And it's all in the details, like little details, like the jigs that he was using and, and instructing us to, to keep casting. You know, one or two casts wasn't enough if we didn't get a bite in that hole. He would be, keep hitting that until you catch, catch a fish out of there. And then we would catch two fish, three fish out of there. No wonder Dave Dinkert wins all these tournaments. Just get lucky every so often. Yeah, wow, look that's at that. what I thought. That's, all these years, that's what I thought was happening. Yeah, beautiful. Just, that's the luckiest guy there is. The real one there. Yeah, he was having a good time sitting <laughs> on like, the edge of that hole. I, I thought I had the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the fish are a little lethargic because they're cold. They aren't going to hit it and run very fast. Yeah. Yeah, it, nice felt, it felt like I came up on the edge of that, that hole. Yeah, and nice, he barely nice just nibbled slot it. fish. What's nice about this time of year, without the sharks up here, you can let these snook go without getting eaten. They've got a little hair sticking out of each one of those scales. In the center of the scale and the center of the lateral line. Yeah, I see that. And I'm learning all kinds of stuff Ooh, listening man. to Dave here. <laughs> you can learn a few things if you listen to Dave. So we're, we're up there and, and really, it's not even 10 o'clock in the morning and we have a ton of fish. I mean, we have caught a ton of fish and that, and you know, that kind of area um, lends itself to that. Like there are a lot of fish up there and like we were saying with this new hatch of this, these small red fish, there seem to be tons more. So the places where there should be fish, there are fish. And you know, there's been other years where, man, you're just certain there should be fish there and they're just, don't seem to be there for whatever reason. Maybe it was the grass, maybe it was uh, something going on, a cycle throughout the redfish or whatever, but there's certainly been years where there are more redfish and less redfish, and, and not, right now we are on a boom. There's certainly a boom. And then you combine that with going out fishing with a guy like Dave Dinkert, who knows exactly where they are, and he was there yesterday, and, and he's gonna be there tomorrow, and you're, you're gonna catch a lot of fish. Well, by 10 o'clock, we had caught a ton of fish, and I'm thinking, man, what in the world could be next for this and he had talked about the sight fishing and sure enough man he, he made a slight move and we spent the rest of the day doing that to your right two o'clock all oh, seven of them seven See them out there yeah looking to the left i got him go 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 hi 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 come on hi bounce it bounce it Bounce higher 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 don't let it fall get back to the back of the pack hurry up before they take off they're taking off and hit the one that Hit the one that was chasing it then. To the left. Yeah. Come on, come on. He's coming. Oh, got it. Oh, nice. Nice job, man. <laughs> That's a good fish. That was great. Sight fish in the snook. Pretty awesome. I think you got that one right there. Yeah, I got one. So there were seven of them there? There was a bunch. There were six. Dave actually counts them. We just look over there, see a bunch of fish, and go, there's 30. <laughs> whole bunch of them. That's a pretty safe bet, just a whole bunch. That pretty narrows it down, doesn't it? Yeah. Then, nice. you, then you can't be accused of exaggerating. Mm -hmm. There were a whole bunch of them. That's a real nice one. It is a great one. I tell you, just the situation is incredible. Is, is great. And here, this clear water and being able to see them just Isn't laid it? up like that. That fish like turn at the right time to come over from the cast, but you casted all the other ones like 
with a long cast, you can al you can almost always do something with it. Mm -hmm. If you're too short, you're just out of the game. Man, right. That's a beautiful fish. He's got some shoulders on him there. That's, a that's got a, a thick uh, back on it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? That's a good, so good fish. Man, a fish looks bigger in, in person than he did they out there. They always look bigger out of the water snook. They look mm -hmm. small in the water. He's thick. That's a good 31-inch fish. Tell you what, that's legit. Sight fishing those guys on the flats. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going on here? Are they are the snook pushing in right now to warm up? They're just hanging out here warming up. We're, mm -hmm. See, the water's not moving right now. We're at the top of the tide. Yep. So they're just picking up all the heat they can, and they'll slow, slowly slide out to the middle of the basin. So we our timing is perfect here with mm -hmm. the weather and the conditions. The harder you push them, the faster you push them, the more their peck fins go out and yep. they slide. Wow, look at that fish in the water. That is beautiful. Good job. Good job, Tom. We just took delivery of this brand new 24. I'm super excited about it, but the thing that I may be the most excited about on this boat is the new power pole charge system. I have spent a lot of time researching battery chargers, batteries, all with the intention of staying out there longer, doing more of what we want to do. Sometimes we run the trolling motor super hard. Sometimes we have to use the live wells all day long. Sometimes the electronics will draw the batteries down. The power pole charge system is really three devices in one. It's an emergency start, it's a charge on the go, and it's a traditional battery charger and sometimes we'll fish a small area, then we might take a 45 minute run or an hour run to go to somewhere else. Before this charging system, all that power was lost. Your engine's producing all kinds of power that could be put to one of the batteries, but until now, there was just no technology that would do this. The power pole charging system will send the power to the weakest battery. So if you've drawn down your trolling motor batteries and you get up and you take a long run, your trolling motor batteries are gonna be getting charged the whole time. It's a smart system, so it knows which battery is the weakest and it sends the charge there. The power pole charge system is really a fantastic thing. It's one of the things that I'm the most excited about in this whole brand new boat. It comes with this amazing app. This app shows you exactly what's going on with your battery. So if you feel like maybe your trolling motor is getting a little weak, you can look at your phone, you can see exactly how much charge you have in that battery and you might know, hey, if I just take a 20 minute run, I'm gonna get that back up to a certain voltage where I know I'm gonna be able to fish through the rest of the day or maybe I need to take a long run or maybe I need to back off the trolling motor a little bit. This thing, it gives me a lot of peace of mind. If I'm at a place where I've never been before, I know that that electrical outlet is actually working. It's providing charge to my batteries and we're gonna be good to go for tomorrow. The power pole charge system is something you definitely wanna check out. You can go to the link below and you can find out exactly how to get it. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. Waypoint, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. And by Bruno and Rod Holders. Nikon. Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Golden Boat Lifts. It's hard for me to believe Saltwater Experience has been on for 17 years, and you can find every show for free on Waypoint TV. Go to waypointtv.com and download the app. Awesome, absolutely awesome. Well, I'm looking out there like there's something dark on the side of that hole. What could it be? It's almost like it's my job, huh? <laughs> Dude, Dave, that is so cool, man. Nice. Yeah, so in the wintertime, all these fish can eat and uh, digest crustaceans much faster than they can fin fish. That's why their diet changes quite a bit. Huh, yeah. why is that? Because their metabolism slows down in the wintertime. Huh. 
doesn't mean they won't eat a fin fish. I mean, they're still opportunists and they're going to eat whatever comes by them, but they'd rather eat the shrimp. You know, Dave, anybody that spent that kind of time in that area is going to pick up a few things, but it's obvious that Dave has done a lot of other kind of study. Like, you know, he sees something, he goes, oh, I wonder what that bird is. He's going to go home and he's going to, he's going to find out exactly what that bird is and why it's migrating and where it goes. And Dave knows about the birds. He knows about the fish. He knows about all the wildlife. He knows about the grass. He knows about as much as anybody I've ever been with about the Everglades. And, you know, a guy like that, you would think maybe, maybe could easily be like, well, I think I pretty much know everything about the Everglades. But it seems to me that Dave's at a place in his life where he's kind of like, man, I've learned a lot. And I've learned just enough to know how much more there is to learn about the Everglades. And that's a pretty refreshing thing, kind of like a white belt mentality for a guy like that. To, he's always, he's always learning. Go right, see that redfish moving left, come back left, right there, just past the mud. See him. Got him. He I think it. he ate it. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was good. Good work. That was good. Good wow. work. Nice job, Dave, showing, showing getting me on well, so, so quick. Often we get lucky and see the fish in the right spot. That was great. That nice size of that trout. I like it when they're moving. They're easy to see when they're moving. Yeah. They're really hard to see when they're not moving. Wow, that is awesome. I can get him for you if you want. Just stay right there. That is so cool. He's hooked weird. Look at it, it's round as, look at that. The hook's on that inside out. See that? Yeah. Lasso. He's, anybody can hook him normal. Well, I'll tell you what, if you could hook him like this every time, you wouldn't lose many. Dave, this has been incredible, man. Fish everywhere, catching them in the, uh, early morning in the deeper water with the jigs and then just sight fishing as good as it gets right here. I always wondered what it would be like to go fishing with Dave Dinkert. Well, when the weather's right, it gets calm like this, you gotta take advantage of it. I'll tell you what though, but you're a hell of a guide, man. You know, you go and fish an area that Rich and I both fished up here quite a bit and then you just know it so well.